day one of Earth Day Live is almost over. And remember those demands we talked about earlier. Nine of the leading youth-led climate justice organizations in the US came together to create them. And I am so here for it. So sign on to the demands, click the panel to your right, or if you're watching on your phone, click the link below. Meanwhile, you can also take steps to minimize your environmental footprint. Here to show us how is environmental activist, entrepreneur, and blogger, Lauren Singer. Hey. Hey, Lauren, <laughs> what's up? <laughs> like my, my Super Bowl, my Christmas, my Hanukkah all wrapped together. So I'm, I'm stoked. <laughs> So uh, for those who don't know you, I just wanted to give a little bit of information, yeah. but for those of you who do, you know we're in for a treat. Lauren is the founder of the internationally celebrated media platform Trash is for Tossers. And that's what this segment is, Trash is for Tossers. And she also is the founder and CEO of the world's first and largest zero waste lifestyle shop, Package Free. Um, she is the face of zero waste, y'all. <laughs> The girl with the jar. So jar, yep. <laughs> eight years of waste in one mason jar. Like yes. blows my mind. I'm trying to even figure out what that looks like because it is so far from the way I live, even though I try to be sustainable. Like I'm just curious, when did the desire start for you to be um, conscious about your your imprint, your, the amount of waste that you create, like how old were you? I've been passionate about sustainability for a really long time. The thing that really opened my eyes to it was reading Rachel Carson's book, Silent Spring, which was published in 1962. And that's really the piece of literature, the piece of work that launched the environmental movement. And it showed that uh, this chemical, this man-made pesticide, DDT, um, was affecting the environment and people. And I realized through reading that book that human beings are the only creatures on earth that have the power to destroy the planet for everything else that lives here. And and that really scared me. Um, but I realized if we have the power as a species to do something so detrimental, maybe we have the power to do really positive stuff as well. So I decided to start studying environmental science and through that learned this really hard lesson. Um, and I learned it from a girl who was in my last class that I had to take after four years of college, who every day she'd come to class and she'd bring this big plastic bag with a plastic clamshell full of food and a plastic fork and knife and a drink and bag of chips. And she'd throw everything out. And I thought it was so weird that there was this girl who cared about environmental sustainability, but was making so much trash. And I went home one day after class to make dinner and I realized that everything in my house was actually packaged in plastic. Was it, was it my eggs packaged in plastic, my milk, my pre-washed greens, my condiments, my cutting board, in my bathroom, all of my beauty products, my hair products, my cleaning products, and then in my closet, all of my fast fashion, which was made of plastic. And I had been proselytizing sustainability for four years, obsessed with it. But I realized that there's a huge difference between talking about and preaching your values and actually living them. So when I realized that, I realized that I had to give up plastic and I started living a zero waste lifestyle. Um, and I, I did that because I learned that you can't just buy your way out of plastic. You know, at least eight years ago, you couldn't. And I, I realized that I had to start making my own products and reducing my waste to really live my values every single day. Yeah, I mean, it's hard. Like I've been trying for a while. And one of the reasons that I really like your blog is because it makes it more digestible. It just like hacks away at it a little bit of the time. Like you don't feel like you have to turn your life upside down right away. It's kind of impossible, but just like little by little. But I feel like as soon as I like, okay, like I got all the plastic out of my fridge and then I go into my bathroom and I'm like, oh my God, how do I do this? How do I do laundry without plastic? How do I do it? And, and it's just like, like so hard to know where to start but I think um what I get from your blog is like the most important thing is just to start and like fi you okay. figure it out as you go you'll look to people yeah. like you as guides to help you along the way to get information um so uh, I want to talk about you you really, you can't go zero waste in a day, a week, a month, a year. I think of it like losing weight, right? The average American makes four and a half pounds of trash per person per day. If I tried to lose four and a half pounds 
per day, I would die, right? So it's just not a sustainable thing. Um, so I like to think about it to your point, you just start, start with one thing, incorporate it into your routine. Um, and then after it, you kind of like, don't think about it anymore, move on to the next thing. I like to think that every positive step to reduce your waste and have a more positive environmental impact is positive. So start small, you don't have to do everything all at once. Little by little is the key. Do you feel like there are some steps that are like, these are some like larger, heavier hitters as far as impact is concerned, and some that are like, this helps, but you know, the, these are really big ones if you want to focus on changing these habits, and they're habits that take longer to change, you know, like, for instance, maybe even the amount that you use your car, like the amount that you use electricity, like when you're getting outside of plastic and waste and thinking about you know, all of the elements in your home that contribute that you don't always think about until you think about them. Definitely. I mean, obviously these are different circumstances. So take what I'm saying with a grain of salt, because right now it's important to focus on health and safety. And if you can't reduce your waste right now, that's okay. Um, but I like to focus on why is reducing your waste even a good thing? We all know throwing trash away is, is bad, but why? And I, I like to think about it because of climate change. People focus on carbon dioxide as that thing, that horrible thing that we have to reduce for climate change, but actually methane is so much more potent of a warming gas uh, compared to carbon dioxide over a short-term time frame, in the time frame where scientists estimate that the catastrophic effects of climate change will occur. And the three drivers of human-made methane are uh, landfills, one, number one, which is why I focus on it, animal agriculture, so eating meat and natural gas. We can't really control the energy and where our energy comes from, so I kind of put that one to the side. Eating meat is something hopefully most of us can do less of, um, but then landfill, we all make trash and there's so many different touch points for waste, so that's why I focus on reducing trash just a little bit to reduce methane and combat climate change. So it's a really great way to not uh, help contribute to global warming. And so for me, you know, I like to say to people, if you want to reduce your waste, look in your trash can and see what you're already throwing away. See if there's something that you're throwing away in excess and something that you'd be okay living without. Whether it's a plastic water bottle and you could switch to something like those gorgeous water jugs behind you, um, or, you know, if you're, uh, you know, using a lot of single-use disposable beauty products, you could head to my company, PackageFreeShop.com, which I started to provide really easy and convenient alternatives to single-waste disposable products. Um, that's a great place to start. Or you can go to Trashes for Tossers and get a million touch points. Um, you know, even doing something so small as buying... Um, or making bread as opposed to buying something packaged in plastic, making mayonnaise, if you like mayonnaise, instead of buying it packaged in plastic, anything that you'd buy packaged in plastic, you know, you can find a reusable and package free alternative for. So that's a great place to start. And what would you say for families who are like, who, who their number one concern for not producing less waste is like, I'm a low income family or like I'm a single mom with lots of kids. Like some of this stuff is a little more expensive than I'm used to spending. Like I need to just be able to have the ease or the accessibility. Like how, how do you marry, marry the two perspectives of like, yeah. of like, yes, I understand the strain that you're under financially and the time that you're under with the family that you have to raise. And then also keeping the bigger picture in mind of like you want to raise this family into an environment that has an environment. Yeah. I mean, it's such a great and important question, right? Um, a lot of things that I've done to reduce my waste have actually helped me save both time and money. The time that it would take me to walk to the store, buy toothpaste, um, pay, you know, $6 for toothpaste or however much it is, walk back, that's like 40 minutes and time is money, right? So right. for me to make my own toothpaste, you can use baking soda and baking soda is like my, my thing that I use for everything. I use baking soda as deodorant. Um, I use it as a toothpaste. You can use it as spot treatment and exfoliant. It's this amazing, amazing product. So even a change like that can save you significant amounts of money it can help to reduce a lot of products. Um, buying, you know, secondhand fashion, keeping, learning how to sew and fix clothes that are, 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 you know, falling apart instead of buying something new. Those are all great ways to live more sustainably while also uh, not having to spend extra money. So using what you already have is one of the most sustainable things that you can do and making it last as long as possible through like repair and proper washing techniques techniques is also amazing um, for people, especially that have low incomes. Um, you know, it's also important to recognize that sustainability is a basic human right. 
and it currently is not accessible for everyone and that is not okay. Right. So at Package Free, you know, I've shifted my mission and my focus so much to be able to address the, the huge problem of how do we make sustainable products accessible for everyone? How can we remove the barrier of entry of price point from the dialogue altogether? Because being able to have access to sustainable products, sustainable tools and education shouldn't be hindered by the amount of money that you make, the color of your skin, your gender identity. So how can we use our power as business owners, as activists, to be able to, to decrease those barriers to access to sustainability? Because again, it's a basic human right and it's not there yet, but, but all we can do is try to make it more accessible for everybody. Yeah, and you know, some of it is financial and then some of it is just information, like Absolutely. knowing what you can use around the house to take care of things that you normally would go to CVS and buy like a Ooh. basket full of things to take care of, you know, like I'm like trying to grow an avocado tree out here so I can like use avocado as conditioner Amazing. for my hair so I don't have to keep buying conditioner and plastic bottles. Like I'm working on my bathroom right now and trying, yeah. <laughs> trying to get I mean, it there's down. There's an amazing but... woman that lives in LA. She lives on a, a property with her house included that's under 5,000 square feet. And she has over 87 types of fruit trees on her property. Mm -hmm. She feeds her family on her property. So, you know, growing food can be time intensive, but if you learn the skills and you grow a few things, you can reduce the amount of money that you're spending on food and also become more self-sufficient, which is something, especially right now in the time of COVID-19, I think we all want to become a little bit more self-sufficient. Yeah. And seeds are so cheap. Like totally. you can find friends that have worm compost or compost started, like sharing, exchanging. Yeah. The value of community, right? Of yeah. course, things are different right now because of the circumstances that we're living through. But, you know, if if you live in a low income community and you can find a group of people or find someone that has a, a piece of property and you want to start a farm and divide resources, divide time and be able to do something like start a garden. I mean, obviously, um, you know, land is, is hard to find. But I know in Los Angeles, at least, um, it used to be that if there was an abandoned lot that you could start a farm on it. And I think programs like that are really really amazing. Um, so so I, I love that point, like the power of community. If you want something or you need something or you want access to something, there's probably someone else in your community who's looking for the same thing. So getting together, asking people for the things that you want, asking if they want to get involved is a great way to, to make things happen. So here's a question. I know we talk a lot about consumerism and I kind of just want to reframe it a little bit. Um, I want to talk about minimalism. Yes. You think minimalism and sustainability are inextricably linked? No, okay. I do. Um, you know, I saw a really funny, <laughs> I saw a really funny, was it a New Yorker uh, drawing that was like, yeah, you have fun with your eight pairs of you know, clothing. That, Rolling your seven. Yeah, like, I didn't tell you so many things for joy. Yeah. No, I mean, look, I, I love clothes. I love buying clothes. I shop secondhand and I have a closet full of stuff. I think, however, there is this realization that I've had through COVID that I don't need as much as I do have. And that's been a really beautiful uh, realization for me. But you can have things, especially if you consume secondhand and keep things out of the waste stream. You don't have to be a minimalist to live a sustainable lifestyle. You can have a plethora of preserves, shelves full of things that you value and that are beautiful to you, uh, natural things all over your home. You can have art, you can have books, um, all of these things. It doesn't mean that if you have things, you're not sustainable. Right. And I think it's important to remember that there's so much stuff out there that already exists. So if you are going to be a consumer, something that you can think about is how can I be a more conscious consumer? And if I am going to buy something, how can I buy something that's already been put into the waste stream and not make a demand for new products? So as opposed to buying something like a, you know, a new electronic, can I buy something that's refurbished as opposed to buying new clothing? Can I buy something that's secondhand as opposed to buying a new electronic? Can I buy something off of Craigslist? I bought my juicer off of Craigslist. I saved hundreds of of dollars and it works just as well. So I think, you know, it's sustainable and you save money and you keep things out of the waste streams. For me, it's, it's like a win, win, win. So you can have things, but just consume more consciously. And there's other external benefits um, like saving money, like living a healthier lifestyle that come from that. Right. What do you think it's going to take for like the marketing industry to start, stop convincing us that we need more stuff and to start getting on board with more sustainable business? I mean, 
I, think I mean, I think the point of education, right? I think we need to uh, really get the education and the word out there as individuals, educate ourselves, educate our community, educate our children uh, to, to tell them about how impactful irresponsible consumerism and consumption is, right? It starts from there. We need to educate people who are the next generations of consumers, start them early on understanding this. And I think the younger generations of today do, they know that climate change is the biggest threat facing you know, our planet. And so they, they get it. Um, so I think, Companies that aren't serving sustainability, they will not succeed and thrive, especially with Gen Z, especially with the generations that know that climate change is destroying our planet and will destroy their futures and their livelihoods. So I think marketing or not, if a business doesn't shift towards more sustainable practices, it will not survive. Yeah, and then starting businesses like yours is going to really help. The more they pop up, the more other people feel like they need to change the way that they're doing things to yeah, be I really believe in the power of entrepreneurialism and yeah. if, if there's a problem that you don't see being solved by somebody else asking yourself can I or a group of people in my community or somebody that I know solve this problem ourselves I started package free because nobody was providing convenient access to sustainable products that help you reduce waste and so I changed the trajectory of my life to start it and so I like to ask myself how can I use my power as an individual to make positive change and solve problems that I have and probably other people have as well. Yeah. Um, can we talk about recycling for a little bit? <laughs> I feel like, drink. No. <laughs> yeah, please. I feel like it's not, I, I feel like, yes, like the, the main goal is to not put things in the trash bin, whether it be the actual trash can or the recycling bin, but if you are putting things into the recycling bin, like, is it really as simple as putting it in the recycling bin and putting it down a chute or taking it? Like, I, sometimes I feel like I'm a, I, that it's potential that I'm a bit of a lazy recycler and there might be things that need more attention that I have to work into my routine. Like I have to look at these things and see and ask my building, do you re recycle these things? And if they don't find a facility where I can take them to that takes those things. Like what's kind of your... <laughs> I mean, the, the short answer is it's so complicated and there is no short answer. <laughs> um, so, so that's important to remember. What I try to focus on is how do I how do I prevent things from having to be recycled in the first place? How can right. I invest in reusables and making my things myself and getting things packaged free so that I don't have anything that has to even be sent to recycling or to landfill? That being said, if you are going to recycle and you do have recyclables, it's important to do to to put those in a in an organization and in a state where when they go to the next phase of, of getting recycled, they have the most likely chance of actually being recycled, right? Um, so that means making sure you wash everything properly. That's the first thing. If something is uh, covered in food or if it's paper that has oil all over it, it won't get recycled. And not only that, it'll taint the waste stream. And so it'll right. make it even harder for other things that are clean to be recycled. So that's really important. Separating different types of materials from one another, are, it's also a really friendly and nice thing to do for your garbage man, uh, for the recycling facility. So that's a great thing that you can do as well. And then separating properly. It's again, like respect for our communities, right? If, if you have neighbors that recycle and you're not doing it properly, not only are you disrespecting the system, but you're disrespecting your neighbors and the people who are working really hard to make sure that these processes happen correctly. And we pay as taxpayers for those systems. We pay for municipal recycling. We pay for garbage pickup. So by not uh, actually doing it right, you're, you're putting a financial burden on yourself and your community. So out of respect for communities and for our neighbors, I, I, I try to do recycling right. So separating things properly, um, is great. And just going to your local municipality and asking, you know, um, how are things separated? What is actually recycled by my city? And making sure you're shopping in alignment with that. So if you know plastics number three aren't recycled by your city, but plastics number one are, maybe when you're in the grocery store, you can make sure to focus on buying one instead of three. Even if you're not going to eliminate plastic, not all plastics are created equal. And then metal is the easiest thing to recycle. So if you are going to consume something that's packaged, go for metal. It has the high highest chance of being recycled because technically everything is recyclable, but 
whether or not it's recycled is so much determined on the value of the recycled product. And something like thin plastic has such a low recycled value that it's cheaper to actually landfill it. Something like a metal, which is really easy to recycle, will often be recycled and have a high recycling rate because of the value for the recycled product. So those are just important things to think about, but it's, under, it's important to understand the systems that exist in your community, get to know the processes that make our cities and our communities run and be respectful to your neighbors and participate them in, a, in the right way. Yeah, man, start a neighborhood compost. <laughs> Composting is my number one thing. If you're gonna do anything to have a more positive impact on the planet and you have the ability, the time, the space to do it, you know, you can live in a dark apartment and worm compost, but composting is the number one thing. Keeping food out of landfill reduces methane, reduces climate change. Composting is like my ultimate favorite. And it's really cool to see all your food. I don't know. I love it. Dude, I just set up my worm composter the yeah. other day. <laughs> The little wigglers are in there going yeah. now. I think I'm going to have to do another one though, just for the overflow and like. Totally. But it's amazing to think to all of that would have gone to landfill. So right. when I hold my big bag of compost for the week, I'm like, oh my God, this would have gone into trash. This is like 10 pounds of stuff. Um, it's, so a lot. it's really amazing when you, when you see that. And then it feels weird to throw food in the trash. And you're, and you're, it's like, I was so less conscious about how much food scraps I actually did throw away. Before. Yeah. <laughs> and even those food scraps, like things like onion peels, potato skins, carrot peels, those can be made into a stock. So again, you could take something that's waste and make it into something that's useful. And so you right. can save money. And especially now stock, we're probably all buying it to make soup. So that's a great option as well. Yep, totally saving my citrus peels for some oils and cleansers. <laughs> um, this totally wraps up our session, but it was so lovely to talk to you. You are Thank wonderful. You. you guys, you have to go check out Lauren Singer. If you don't already know, check out Trashes for Tossers. Check out Package Free. You can get some really cool stuff. I've got like a shopping cart filled on the website ready for my next order of oh, things. Um, it was so lovely talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. This was amazing. I had a blast. I hope you had a blast. Tomorrow, we've got an equally incredible lineup that you will not want to miss. And now, is everybody ready to get up and moving? I hope so, because we've got back-to-back -back parties. First up is a dance break with Madame Gandhi, and then don't go anywhere, because right after that is the DJ dance party with Questlove from The Roots. See you guys later. <laughs>